Okay. Hello everyone. Welcome to an academy. Let's crack neat PG. Okay, I'm Dr. Shilpa Dinesh. I'm a practicing pediatric consultant in Bangalore. I have an experience of teaching undergraduate and postgraduate medical students. And I have done my MBBS and MD from Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences. Today we'll be discussing about rickets. Uh, as you all know, rickets again uh, uh, is an important topic. So as continuation of yesterday's topic, which was in micronutrients, today we'll be discussing vit uh, vitamin D. Yeah, and vitamin D related uh, rickets. Okay. So before that, I would want to talk a little bit about Unacademy. Unacademy is India's largest online learning platform. And there are a lot of benefits you can avail from this platform. Firstly, there is daily live, live classes. You can attend this every day, engage with your favorite educator. You can ask your doubts You can it, it, in the live chat box. It gets cleared then and there. Uh, also, to prepare for any um, uh, entrance exam, you need to have a structured course. Okay, you need to plan. So need PG entrance is a one year's preparation, right? So you have to plan for your entire one year uh, the, your course. So in an academy, all the courses are structured in line with your exam syllabus. And this will be a great boost and it will help you in your preparation really well. Also, whenever you're preparing for your uh, entrance exams, you need to analyze yourself. You need to know what are your strong areas, what are your weak areas. So that is provided, uh, I mean, uh, by an academy, we, you have live tests, quizzes, mock tests happening. So th there are regular live tests, quizzes, mock tests, and you can evaluate yourself better. Okay. And coming to the unlimited access. So if you subscribe to the subscription, you get unlimited access to all the live and recorded courses. Okay. And all this in the comfort of your home and with the comfort of your own device. So these are the top educators and they have regular classes on this platform. Do go attend their classes. And uh, all the subjects required for NEET PG preparation are taught in this platform. And uh, you have to, uh, so that is why you can plan really well. Next is the, these are the ongoing courses happening in our platform at present. And coming to the NEED PG uh, subscription package, as you can see, uh, the NEED PG subscription can be subscribed from a period for one month to two years. But I would uh, recommend the one year and the two year uh, subscription package as your NEED PG preparation is a year's preparation. So this would be of uh, great help and it, turns, it will be very reasonable compared to the one month um, subscription. So the one year subscription comes up to 25,000. And if you use my code Shilpa10, you get a 10% discount and it comes up to 22,500. Okay. And the two year subscription is 30,000. And using my code Shilpa10, you get a 10% discount and it comes up to 27,000. So the rates are very reasonable compared to other platforms. I would highly recommend this. And using this platform in the beginning of your preparation helps you a long way. So I would highly recommend. Uh, and so you should too. Okay. So to coming to vitamin D. Vitamin D is called the sunshine vitamin. You know, vitamin uh, D is uh, converts the dehydrate. So here it is. So the dehydrocholesterol vitamin d and also you can get vitamin d to the dietary sources okay so the vitamin d gets converted to 25 hydroxy vitamin d by 25 hydroxylase okay in the liver then this 25 hydroxy vitamin d is converted to 125 dihydroxy vitamin d in the kidney by 1 alpha hydroxylase Okay, so here you can see the 25 hydroxy vitamin D is converted by 24 hydroxylase to 24 25 dihydroxy vitamin D. So this is not an active form. The active form is 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. So this 125 hydroxy vitamin D <coughs> causes increase in the bone mineralization. Okay, increase in the um, uh, 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 calcium and the phosphate reabsorption at the kidney and also increase in the calcium and the phosphate absorption in the intestine. 
okay so here you can see certain negative marks of put so if there is increase a lot of increase in 125 dihydroxy vitamin d they can it can inhibit the uh, production of 25 hydroxy vitamin d likewise so you've seen this fiber growth factor Okay, fibroblast growth factor so that has an inhibitory effect on the conversion of uh, 25 hydroxy vitamin d to 125 dihydroxy vitamin d so there are a lot of um, vitamin d related disorders like rickets uh, which are due to the presence of fibroblast growth factor okay so we'll be discussing that in the next uh, few chapters so first of all coming to rickets now the bone okay is made up of the matrix osteoid matrix called osteoid and a mineral phase which is formed by the calcium and phosphorus in the form of it is in the form of hydroxy epitate okay so uh, osteomalacia okay occurs because of unmineralized matrix and it affects both children and adults okay so so now coming to rickets So now coming to rickets. Rickets is a disease of of the growing bone. Okay, growing bone. So there is unmineralized matrix. matrix at the growth plate okay at the growth plate and this occurs on yeah this occurs before the fusion of the epiphysis now the growth plate and the osteoid they continue to grow okay so the growth plate and the osteoid they continue to grow but the mineralization is inadequate okay so mineralization is inadequate so therefore what happens the circumference of the growth plate inadequate, inadequate mineralization so what happens the circumference of the growth plate increases okay and at the also at the metaphysis so this is why you see widening of the of the wrist and ankle another thing what you see is there is softening of bones see there is no enough mineralization and all so there is softening of bones so because there is softening of bones there can be bending of these bones right bending of the bones if there is a muscle muscle pull because of weight bearing action like muscle pull okay because of the weight bearing action so because of this so the, the softening of bones the bones bend and as a result you can see deformities in rickets okay so the main concept is the the matrix matrix and the calcium and phosphorus that's the mineral phase so if they go hand in hand then everything is fine but either the matrix is obstructed or if the uh, mineral phase at the calcium and phosphorus is obstructed then uh, there, there will be development of osteomalacia or rickets okay so coming to the causes of rickets so there are a lot of causes so one is firstly it could be because of vitamin d disorders 
could be because of phosphorus deficiency, calcium deficiency and renal losses. Okay, so what are these? So nutritional vitamin D deficiency. Yeah, Nut So nutrition vitamin D deficiency. This is because of decreased nutrition in the diet or because of the cutaneous synthesis. There are not might not be enough cutaneous synthesis of vitamin D. Okay. One is congenital vitamin D deficiency. So congenital vitamin D deficiency is because if the mother hasn't had enough vitamin D during pregnancy, that will be transferred to the child and that can cause with congenital vitamin D deficiency. Second, so there should be some secondary cause. Okay, malabsorption. The vitamin D is not getting absorbed in the body. Increased disintegration. There might be normal production of vitamin D, but due to certain mutations or due to certain requirements in the body, there is increased degradation of the vitamin D happening. Again, there is a vitamin D dependent rickets. There is type one and type two. Okay, so again over here there is some mutations in one of the levels of the metabolism of vitamin D. That I'll be talking in the next uh, slide. Chronic kidney disease. So as you have seen, kidney is very important for the reabsorption of calcium and phosphorus. If something is wrong in the kidney, so the reabsorption of the uh, calcium and phosphorus doesn't happen and in turn it will affect the vitamin D. Phosphorus deficiency. Again, it could be inadequate, inadequate intake in the diet premature rickets so children born with premature uh, pre prematurity have should be always uh, supplemented with phosphorus and calcium because that itself can cause to premature rickets so i have written also in calcium deficiency so premature children are uh, susceptible to calcium and phosphorus deficiency and as a result they have to be supplemented in the first few months of life Aluminium containing antacids also cause uh, phosphorus deficiency. Calcium deficiency can occur because of low intake, because of malabsorption. Again, if there is any dietary inhibitors of calcium absorption. Renal losses. This is very important. So, X-lean hypophosphatemic rickets, autosomal dominant hypophosphatemic rickets, autosomal recessive uh, hypophosphatemic Phosphatemic rickets, tumor induced rickets, McCune Albright syndrome, epidermal nevus syndrome. Okay, so these few diseases are related to the fibroblast, fibroblast growth factor. So I have told you in the beginning in the metabolism. So when if there is increase, I mean increase activity of fibroblast growth factor that can inhibit the conversion of 24 hydroxy vitamin D to 125 hydroxy vitamin D which is the active form. Okay. So other uh, causes of renal uh, losses are hereditary hypophosphatemic rickets with hypercalciuria, Fanconi syndrome. Okay. Yeah. So what are the clinical features of children with rickets? So generally these children are, uh, they have failure to thrive, they don't get, gain weight well, there is listless, listlessness, there is irritability, their abdomen is protruded, there is muscle weakness, especially in the proximal muscles, okay, there might be repeated fractures, so this might be one of the way they present to you, okay, so generally uh, uh, the presentation of uh, rickets can be various, but um, some most of the time children come with presentation of deformity so as i have told you the softening of the bone itself can cause uh, deformities because of the weight bearing effects okay next coming to the head head there is there could be cranial uh, tapes cranial tapes have said is because of the softening of the cranial bones bones so oh, this the softening is such that when you apply pressure and you release, you have this ping pong ball. Ping pong ball. When you press a ping pong ball, that kind of uh, yeah, you feel the same kind of effect in the child who has cranial tapes. Okay, frontal bossing, delayed closure of the fontanelle, delayed dentition, presence of caries in the de uh, dent uh, dental caries, cranial synostosis okay in the back there could be scoliosis kyphosis lordosis in the chest 
there will be rachitic rosary so rachitic rosary is basically um thickening at the costo chondral junction so when you touch it you have a feeling of the rosary so that is called rachitic rosary yesterday i have spoken about sacrobiotic rosary right that is seen in vitamin c deficiency okay that is curvy next harrison's groove so there is a sulcus at the lower border of the chest anterior part of the lower border of the chest this is because when the see now what is happening um, the ribs are soft now i have told you in brackets the bones are soft the ribs have become soft so now during inspiration the diaphragm pulls the ribs down so that is why there is this groove so with with chronicity the groove become the sulcus becomes more prominent okay that is called harrison's groove and then rest there will be repeated respiratory infections atelectasis extremities yeah as i've told you uh the the matrix and the osteoid grows at the growth plate and because there is no mineralization there is increase in the circumference of the growth plane and as a result there will be enlargement of the wrist and the ankles vagus and the varus deformities wind swept, uh, wind swept uh, deformity so wind swept deformity is in one uh, so one will have a varus deformity and the other can have uh, will have a, a valgus deformity so if this is the midline okay so there is a varus and the valgus so if you're going away it is valgus so this is a wind swept deformity anterior bowing of the tibia and the femur coxa vera leg pain okay hypocalcemic symptoms include tetany and seizures strider right yeah so serum evaluation of vitamin d Twenty five hydroxy vitamin D. Okay, so one is even evaluation of twenty five hydroxy vitamin D. In the radiology, you get you should we have to do the X ray of the wrist. Okay, wrist. So there you can see features like praying, popping. clean okay so so this if this is the um, if this is the radius so if there is an irregular border like this that is called as ring and if this part gets more concavity okay that is called cupping the certain lines like this at the metaphysis and in the metaphysial and the diaphysial junction it is called as pain okay so treatment so before they would uh, recommend the recommendation was something called as the stars therapy which included high doses of high doses of vitamin d okay so now uh, vitamin d that was uh, 60000 units okay U units uh, uh, daily or weekly oops uh, it 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 had to reach 6 lakh units but now they the the treatment has changed to a high dose only but uh, not as high as 60000 it is 2000 units 3000 units and 6000 units so 2000 units in children less than 12 months and 3000 units in children less than uh, i mean 1 to 12 years and 6000 units in children more than 12 years and to be given for a year 
okay so uh, and this should be supplemented with calcium for three months at least okay and at the four we at four weeks of treatment you can see certain resolution in the x-ray findings radiological resolutions okay but if you do not find any changes in the uh, x-ray uh, resolution in the x-ray finding then you will have to rule out causes for refractory rickets okay so uh, and again once the treatment is completed again you have to get a radiological evidence of healing so you have to repeat a x-ray to find how what is the he radiological healing happening also if this over here there is daily uh, intake of vitamin d so if there is no compliance no complaints then we can try the high dose stoss therapy okay yeah so vitamin d dependent rickets type 1 so this is a autosomal Yeah, so this is the autosomal recessive rickets. Okay, so over here there is a uh, mutation in the gene encoding for 1 alpha hydroxylase. Okay, so now I've told you 1 alpha hydroxylase converts 25 hydroxy uh, vitamin D to 125 hydroxy vitamin D. So it prevents the conversion of to 125. vitamin d so these children are present between in the first second year of life so they present similar to rickets okay so what i have said in rickets so in rickets one is there is failure to thrive there is listlessness there is protruded abdomen There is craniotapes. So we'll go. This is general. So head, head craniotapes. Then there is um, delayed closure of fontanel. What else? There is frontal bossing. Bossing. There is delayed dentition. There, is, there can be dental caries. Then uh, next coming to the back. Okay, chest. Chest. There will be rachitic rosary. Harrison sulcus. Uh, then there will, I've told you atelectasis. Repeated respiratory infections. Coming to the back. Back, there could be kyphosis. Poliosis and lardosis. And in the legs, there could be valgus varus deformity, coxa vera, bowing of legs, windswept deformity. So all this you could, you can, uh, all this is similar. The features are similar. So what do you do? How is the treatment? So even again, radiology is the same. Now only treatment varies. And you need to know what is the defect. So you should remember, this is in vitamin D, uh, dependent rickets type 1, autosomal recessive rickets. And it is due to 
the defect in the gene encoding for 1 alpha hydroxylase and as a result there is no conversion of 25 hydroxy vitamin D to 1 25 hydroxy vitamin D. So the clinical features are similar to rickets. Okay. So the treatment. So treatment in these patients is you give calcitriol. The calcitriol is 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. Okay. So initial doses you give at 0.25 to 2 micrograms per day. This is it. So you need to know three things. What kind of inheritance it is and what, where is the defect and what happens because of the defect and what is the treatment because the clinical features and the diagnosis is same okay next coming to vitamin d dependent type 2 rickets so what happens here so here there is mutation in the vitamin d receptor so there is adequate 25 hydroxy vitamin d There is adequate 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. But what happens here? There is a defect in the vitamin D receptor. So because of that, any amount of 125 dihydroxy vitamin D might not uh, the might not have an uh, uh, effective result. This is because the vitamin D receptor itself is mutated. So that is resistant to the white, uh, 125 hydroxy vitamin D. So these children along with rickets, rickets feature, they might present with alopecia. Okay, so depending on the severity, from it might be from it might range from alopecia areta to alopecia totalis, and the inheritance is autosomal. Sorry, autosomal disease. Okay, so these children are are treated with. So you remember uh, here, okay, I'll tell you, treated with high doses of vitamins. So that is, it could, uh, uh, high doses of 25 hydroxy vitamin or 125 dihydroxy vitamin. Okay. So uh, calcium doses are also required. Uh, we should supplement along with calcium. Okay, so as I have told you, vitamin D receptor is mutated. It is not. So how can you give treatment with 25 hydroxy vitamin D and 125 hydroxy? So sometimes what happens, there might be partial defect in the vitamin D receptors. So that is why the, in, uh, the amount produced by the body is not enough for, for, for the effect of vitamin D. That is why high doses of vitamin D is given. And that is why if there is a partial, uh, partial functioning of the vitamin D receptor, then that will... Uh, Help in, help in the management of rickets. But if it is a complete uh, defect, then even vitamin D cannot um, work in such cases and the uh, treatment prognosis is might not be satisfactory. Okay. So, here what do you need to know? So, in vitamin D dependent rickets type 2, you need to know there is mutation in the vitamin D receptor and the inheritance is autosomal recessive. There is normal levels of 25 hydroxy vitamin D and 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. But, uh, yeah, but the, since there is a defect in the vitamin D, whatever uh, white, uh, 125 dihydroxy vitamin D is produced in the body is resistant, uh, I, mean, I mean, it doesn't get activated at the vitamin D receptor. 
okay so along with the rickets features these children have alopecia and depending on the severity it can be uh, it, it, the alopecia varies from alopecia areata to alopecia totalis okay so the treatment includes high doses of vitamin d if there is some partial uh, partial functioning in the vitamin d receptor so if there is any partial functioning in the vitamin d receptor then high doses of vitamin d uh, can be given as treatment this should be supplemented along with calcium but if there is a complete mutation or the complete uh, there is no functioning at the vitamin d receptor even giving high doses of vitamin d is of no use and the prognosis is not satisfactory okay so now coming to X-linked phosphatemic rickets. So X-linked phosphatemic rickets is an X-linked dominant. Okay. Now I have told you about fibroblast growth factor 23. So what does this do? Okay, so I need, I'll introduce a little bit of fibroblast, fibroblast growth factor 23. So this fibroblast growth factor, it is a humoral mediator. Okay, so this degular reabsorption of phosphate. So this because of this there is decreased serum phosphorus and this uh, fibroblast growth factor 23 is synthesized by the osteocyte. Okay, so this uh, so this fibroblast growth 23 which is secreted by the osteocyte results in a decre decreased production of 1 alpha hydroxylase. So again, 1-alpha hydroxylase uh, is, is inhibited, okay? And as a result, there is no conversion of 25-hydroxy vitamin D to 125-hydroxy vitamin D. So what is the effect? So this fibroblast growth factor has a, is a humoral mediator, okay? That decreases the renal tubular reabsorption of phosphate and as a result, there is decreased phosphorus. Uh, serum phosphorus also this is uh, produced by the osteocyte and that will inhibit 1 alpha hydroxylase and as a result there is no conversion of 25 hydroxy vitamin d to 125 hydroxy vitamin d next now coming to excellent hypophosphatemic rickets okay so this as i've said you even the carriers female carriers are symptomatic so they that's why this is an excellent dominant disorder so what is the gene which affects so that is called the fex p e p h e x gene so that is nothing but the phosphate phosphate regulating gene of homology to endopeptidase on the X chromosome. So, phosphate endopeptidase X chromosome. So that is what is FEX gene. The phosphate regulating gene of homology to endopeptidase on the X chromosome. So what are the clinical features? So along with the features of rickets, okay, here in this X-linked hypophosphatemia, uh, hypophosphatemic rickets, the lower limbs are Lower limbs are more affected. Affected. And the denta, delayed dentition and tooth abscess is also common. The 
is common. So how do you diagnose? So one is there is low levels of phosphate, there is hypophosphatemia, and then there is decreased levels of 125 hydroxy vitamin D. So how do you treat? So how do you treat these patients? So you should give a combination of of phosphorus plus 125 dihydroxy vitamin D okay and uh, the phosphorus dose is 1 to 3 grams of uh, elemental phosphorus okay and then this should be given in a dose of 4 to 5 divided doses that is because so imme immediately you take phosphorus then that will be metabolized so you have to give in small small intervals so that you maintain a uh, stable serum phosphorus level okay and also uh, the problem with this is the compliance because daily regular intake of phosphorus there might not be good compliance so if there is no good compliance then the management becomes difficult okay so the treatment is a combination of phosphorus and 125 dihydroxy vitamin d so there are a lot of conditions uh, which uh, with overproduction of uh, fibroblast growth factor 23 so one is the mccune albright syndrome okay so the mccune albright syndrome yeah in mccune albright syndrome uh, phosphate wasting so which results in hypophosphatemia okay and rickets that is like osteo uh, rickets, like osteomalacia rickets okay okay this is because of fibro fibroostotic uh, polyosteotic fibrous dysplasia also the increased levels of fibroblast growth factor 23 is because of fibrous dysplasia so the affection of uh, the affection of bone in mccune albright syndrome causes the uh, rickets like features okay so poly Osteotic, uh, osteotic uh, fibrous dysplasia itself causes decrease and that causes a renal phosphate wasting mechanism uh, which results in hypophosphatemia and decrease in 125 dihydroxy vitamin B and increased alkaline phosphatase. Okay, so uh, and the treatment includes is the same as X-linked uh, X hypophosphatemic rickets but uh, that is uh, uh, you supplement with phosphorus and 125 hydroxy vitamin D and biphosphonate treatment decreases what is along with that biphosphonate treatment decreases pain and increased chances of fractures okay so now coming to epidermal nevus syndrome so epidermal nevus syndrome have patients have Hypophosphatemic rickets. Again, this is because of the renal phosphate wasting. Renal phosphate wasting. Okay, and also there, uh, there is excess production of fibroblast growth factor twenty three. Okay. So, uh, the, the removal of the tumor, excision of the tumor, uh, I mean, ex excision of the tumor helps in the reversal of uh, rickets like features. But sometimes this nevus is very extensive. So, as a result, uh, some residual effects might be there because of the epidermal nevus syndrome. Another thing in McCune Albright syndrome, uh, the re ex removal of the tumor helps in the remo uh, reversal of the get like features okay but uh, if it is in a uh, posi uh, situ I mean, position where it cannot be removed completely that time you, for this treatment of uh, phosphorus supplementation with 125 uh, hydroxy uh, dihydroxy vitamin d with bisphosphonate therapy in neurofibromatosis what happens this is one of the rickets is one of the extremely 
rare complications. That is the request with phosphate wasting. Okay. We have done. Coming to Fanconi syndrome. Fanconi is a generalized dysfunction of the renal proximal tubules. Okay, so there is generalized dysfunction of the renal proximal tubules. So that is why there is loss of renal loss of of phosphates, amino acids, bicarbonates, glucose, okay, and other molecules. So, so because of this, patients have hyperphosphatemic rickets. And there will be exacerbation of metabolic acidosis in these patients. And because of this, there will be failure to thrive. Okay. So, the treatment uh, we have to, uh, it's based on the etiology. So, these children present with failure to thrive, basically, mostly because there is dysfunction of the renal tubular uh, proximal tubules and that leads to various metabolic changes in the body okay so it causes hyperphosphatemic rickets along with exacerbation of metabolic metabolic acidosis and your as you've seen metabolic acidosis is dangerous to life so now one other thing uh, another uh, disease which can cause rickets is dent disease okay this is a x-linked disorder caused by the mutation in the gene which codes for chloride channel. So the gene, uh, this is expressed in the kidney and the gene is called CLCN5. Okay, so mutation in the chloride gene. So what happens is the affected males so they have features of hematuria, nephrolithiasis, nephrocalcinosis, um, they can get chronic kidney disease. Okay, so uh, they they also have a low molecular weight. proteinuria and hypercalciuria yeah. so others are amino acid urea glucose urea hypophosphatemia hypokalemia so rickets happen in 25% of the case okay and they respond to treatment is oral phosphorus and uh, 125 dihydroxy vitamin d so this uh, you should we should treat with uh, we should treat with caution because this itself can cause hypercalciuria because already they are prone to uh, nephrolithiasis so this can increase hypercalciuria and you can predispose them to uh, renal stones okay so hypervitaminosis d uh, this happens because of excess vitamin D ingestion okay so the so vitamin D ingestion of more than 100 nanograms per ml leads to hypervitaminosis D so they can present with the anorexia vomiting hypertension Okay, hypercalcium and there will be features of hypercalcium so reducing decrease uh, uh, stopping stopping the ingestion okay. 
and slowly uh, reverse the effect. So this is what was for today. So we'll do a revision next 15 minutes. Vitamin D is called the sunshine vitamin D and I have told you uh, from the sunlight the, the UV radiations from the sunlight converts the cutaneous dehydro which is present in the dermis dehydrocholesterol to vitamin D. Also vitamin D can be procured in the body by dietary forms of vitamin D. So in the liver 25 hydroxylase converts vitamin D to 25 hydroxy vitamin D and then 1 alpha hydroxylase. So remember, this is a very important and this thing uh, is very important. 1 alpha hydroxylase so that in the kidney converts 25 hydroxy vitamin D to 125 dihydroxy vitamin D, which is the active form. So this 125 uh, dihydroxy vitamin D in the bone increases mineralization, in the kidney increases the calcium and phosphate reabsorption, in the intestine it increases the calcium and phosphate absorption. So you can see certain inhibitory effects uh, here. So fibroblast growth factor 23 especially inhibits the conversion of 25 hydroxy vitamin D to 125 hydroxy vitamin D and also increase in the 125 dihydroxy vitamin D can have a feedback negative mechanism to reduce the 25 hydroxy vitamin D. Parrot hormone and and low phosphorus uh, stimulate 25, dihy, uh, 25 hydroxy vitamin D for the conversion of 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. Okay, so rickets as I've told you the bone is formed by the matrix okay which is the osteoid and there is a mineral phase which is formed by the calcium and phosphorus and the more uh, and it is in the form of hydroxy appetite okay so what happens in osteomalacia there is unmineralized matrix which uh, uh, and which uh, has rickets like features it affects both children and children and adults but in rickets, what happens? This is a disease of the growing bone, and there is unmineralized matrix at the growth plate. But still, the growth plate and the osteoid grows. But because of inadequate mineralization, there is increase in the circumference of the growth plate, and uh, as a result, there is widening of the wrist and the ankles. You see. Also, because of demineralization, there is not adequate mineralization. There is softening of the bone. So when there is softening of the bone, it can bend, right? So when there is any weight bearing action happening, the bones bend and that can present with deformity. So most of the time, children present to the OPD with deformities, okay? So these are the causes, okay? So there could be vitamin D related disorders, it could be phosphorus deficiency, it could be because of calcium deficiency, it could be because of renal losses. So how does a child, I mean, what are the presentations, what are the feature, clinical features you need to keep in mind? So you <clears throat> remember, one is general. Generally, how will the child be? There will be failure to thrive. There will be weight gain or height, okay? There is, as I've also told you, rickets is a uh, main, uh, one of the main causes for short stature, okay? Yeah. So there is uh, failure to thrive, listlessness, protruding abdomen, muscle weakness, and there is fracture. Head, there is craniotapes, uh, which is the softening of cranial bones. There is frontal bossing. There is delayed fontanel closure. There is delayed dentition. Then there is um, delayed uh, dentition. There can be dental caries and there is craniosynostrosis. In the back, there can be scoliosis, skyphosis, and lordosis. Chest. So, these are uh, rachitic rosary, Harrison group is very important uh, feature we should not be missing. So, in extremities, there is enlargement of wrist, vagus, varus deformities, windswept deformity, coxa vera, then this anterior bowing of the tibia. See, all these pictures, tomorrow we have a MCQ. So, I will be uh, sh uh, showing you pictures on rachitic rosary, Harrison group. All the uh, last one week, whatever chapters I have discussed, I am going to keep an MCQ on that tomorrow. So, I will be showing pictures. So, you don't have to feel bad that I am not showing any pictures here. So, tomorrow I will be discussing the uh, image based questions or so image based as well as other questions. MCQs related to these chapters. Hypo, uh, hypocalcemic symptoms include tetany, seizures, and trider. 
again uh, the diagnosis is serum evaluation and you get a radiology of the wrist and that can that might show fraying cupping and splaying so fraying as i've told you at the epiphyseal border there might be irregular borders uh, there, there might be an irregular border which is a is fraying and the cupping there's increased concavity at the epiphyseal end that is called cupping and then in the uh, metaphyseal end there might be playing okay these vertical lines so treatment uh, the high doses of vitamin d was given that is called stores therapy but now it's changed to 2000 units for a child less than 12 months 3000 units for a child between 1 to 12 years and more than 12 years it is uh, 6000 units okay so if there is no complaints then we could try give a trial of stores treatment but this is more uh, safer okay uh, so after starting treatment four weeks later you get an x-ray done to see any uh, radiological healing so if there is radiological healing we continue with the treatment if there is no uh, radiological healing then we need to find um, the causes for refractory rickets vitamin d dependent rickets type 1 is an autosomal say this is in you know, this is an autosomal uh, recessive ricket here there is a a mutation in the gene which call uh, which codes for 1 alpha hydroxylase and therefore 25 hydroxy vitamin d is not converted to 125 dihydroxy vitamin d uh, and the clinical features are similar to rickets uh, and the treatment includes calcitriol as there is uh, no, no, no production of 125 hydroxy vitamin d and uh, catch so this is it okay but in vitamin d2 you need to know there is mutation in the vitamin d receptor there is normal 25 and 125 hydroxy vitamin d in the serum but the white since the vitamin d receptor itself is uh, not functional so the action of 125 dihydroxy vitamin d is not happening but uh, and these children along with rick features of rickets they present with alopecia so depending on the severity alopecia can vary from alopecia areta to alopecia totalis okay so in these children you give a high dose of vitamin d and c so if there is a, even a minimal functioning in the vitamin d receptor that will act so high doses of vitamin d is given if the prognosis is not satisfied uh, so what happens is if there is complete uh, no action of the vitamin d receptor then that my even giving high doses of vitamin d will not work and that is not satisfactory so a high x-linked hypophosphatemic rickets is a x-linked dominant uh, uh, inheritance the gene involved here is fex gene that is phosphate regulating gene of homology to endopeptidase on the x chromosome okay so this um, gene here uh, has an effect on the fibroblast growth factor 23 so this fibroblast growth factor 23 is a humoral mediator it decreases the renal tubular reabsorption of phosphate and as a result there is decreased phosphate and also this is produced in the osteocyte and then it can inhibit 1 alpha hydroxylase and as a result there is low 125 hydroxy dihydroxy vitamin d so the treatment involves combination of phosphorus and 125 dihydroxy vitamin d okay so yeah these are the conditions which has overproduction of uh, these are tumors tumor induced rickets because of increased fibroblast growth factor 23 so that is seen in mccune albright syndrome epidermal nevus syndrome neurofibromatosis mccune albright syndrome uh, you should know the uh, triad that is polyosteotic fibrous dysplasia polyendocrinopathy and hyperpigmented mccunes so here there is renal wasting of uh, renal phosphate wasting leading to hypophosphatemia also these effects are because of the fibrous dysplasia and also there is increase in the fibroblast growth factor and the treatment includes same as X-linked uh, X-linked hypophosphatemia, hypophosphatemic rickets, along with biphosphonate treatment. Okay, because it reduces uh, bone pain and also uh, decreases the incidence of fracture. Okay, so this is the same thing. So this is first for today. Um, tomorrow we'll be doing uh, MCQs on all the chapters that is uh, growth and development short stature micronutrition uh, micronutrients all the micronutrients and malnutrition okay so tomorrow we'll have an mcq um image based as well as uh, normal mcqs so let's see how much you all have understood uh, anyway uh, use this code shilpa10 to subscribe to the subscription and academy subscription and you get a 10 percent discount all the best study well for your prepare entrance and uh, Daily studying is very important. Huh? Keep motivated. Good luck.